There have not been many directors who influenced and inspired the likes of Tarantino, Scorsese, and Coppola, but Mario Barva has achieved that feat, among others. This prolific Italian jack of all trades is also known to be the one who spawned and invoked the slasher film craze of the 80s. Before Italian cinema welcomed directors such as Lucio Fulci, Dario Argento, and Umberto Lenzi, it was Mario Barva who used violence and eroticism in his films. Characterized with the use of abundant gore and exploitation that felt both cruel and heartfelt, Mario Barva's legacy is immortal. In this video, we will explore six of his best films that every horror fan should watch. But before we begin, please consider subscribing to us, it may be a small click from you, but goes a long way for us. Let's begin, shall we? Number 1, Black Sunday, 1960 A vampiric witch named Acer Vajder was sentenced to death along with her lover Jarvisic. It was Acer's brother Griaby who had found out about Acer's sorcery, and before dying, she cursed Griaby's descendants and vowed revenge. It's I who repudiate you, and in the name of Satan I place a curse upon you. The witch and her paramour were made to wear bronze masks with razor sharp spiked on the inside, but they couldn't be burned at the stake due to a sudden storm. Two hundred years later, Two unfortunate doctors disturbed Acer's tomb and awakened her from her slumber. One of them cut themselves by a piece of glass and then blood dripped on Acer, which brought the vampire back to life. And there we have it, a 200-year-old vampiric witch who would stop at nothing to get the revenge that she wants. In the process, many bodies fall, others become undead, but there's also love and eroticism at play. We must destroy her forever. And I know how it can be done. After more than six decades, Mario Barva's masterpiece of a film stands tall as a pioneering work that set the standards for Italian horror films due to its juxtaposition of beautiful and horrific elements, with solid depictions of eroticism and graphic violence. These elements would be found in later Italian genres, such as the spaghetti western and the giallo, and would be found in the works of people like Dario Argento, speaking of whom, Check out our video about Dario Argento's scariest horror films. We'll leave a link in the description. How can I ever forget? How can I resign myself? I will never find peace. Number 2, Blood and Black Lace, 1964. After a beautiful model named Isabella is murdered by an assailant in a white mask and black trench coat, Inspector Silvestri begins his investigations, questioning the salon manager and the recently widowed Countess Christiana. However, more brutal and hypersexualized murders come to the fore as Silvestri's investigation continues. It is revealed that Isabella kept a secret diary that detailed all the vices and personal matters of the staff, and the killer killed her to retrieve the diary, but it had been stolen and was now exchanging hands. The killer won't stop until retrieving that diary, furthermore, the sexualization of the murders could be a red herring to throw Inspector Silvestri off the trail. Mario Barva's Blood and Black Lace was another marvelous horror thriller, and the value only increases because of its low budget, yet high quality. In fact, the death sequence of Taro Lee has been referenced by several noted filmmakers, including Martin Scorsese. All in all, Barva's film is an excellent murder mystery that appeals to the viewer because the female exploitation is simultaneously cruel and heartfelt. Number 3, Black Sabbath, 1963. The film is an anthology of three stories directed by Mario Barva. The, the first story revolves around a call girl named Rosie, who receives multiple calls Hello. from an unknown caller. Hello. After much struggle and tension, Rosie learns that the caller is her former pimp, Frank, who was in prison solely because of Rosie's testimony. Naturally, he has arrived to exact his revenge, or has he? This, then, from a novel by... Ivan Tolstoy. The second story titled, The Virgilac, 
is set in 19th century Russia and centers around Vladimir Durf, a nobleman, who finds a decapitated body with a knife plunged into the heart. He then meets a man named Giorgio, whose father returns home, only to claim that he had slain a Virgilac, an undead corpse that feeds on the blood of young ones. The final story titled, The Drop of Water, depicts a nurse named Helen Corey, who steals a cursed ring from a corpse that she was supposed to prepare for burial. Strange things follow, and Helen immediately regrets her actions. Black Sabbath has found its way to many lists featuring the best horror films of all time, because the anthology has a bit of everything, from expertly building suspense to a terrifying exploration of the supernatural and mythology. Considered by many as Barva's crowning jewel, Black Sabbath should be on your watch list if you're even vaguely into horror I'll and thrillers. Number 4, Kill, Baby Kill, 1966. In 19th century Romania, Dr. Paul is asked by his friend and policeman Kruger to autopsy a young girl, who died under mysterious circumstances. Paul is assisted by a local girl named Monica, and the two of them find that the dead girl has a silver coin placed inside her heart. Monica reveals to Paul that this is in accordance with a local curse. Only with money in the heart will one who suffers a violent death ever rest in peace. Meanwhile, strange things begin to happen, such as Kruger going missing and Nadine, the innkeeper's daughter, witnessing the ghost of a little girl. It becomes certain that this ghostly little girl is the reason behind the rise in mysterious deaths in the secluded Transylvanian village. And the curse was placed by the hatred of a grieving mother, but Paul will have to fight his skeptical and practical mind if he wishes to save the village and lift the curse. The spirit of Kill Baby Kill lies in its setting and atmosphere, which Mario Barva used to his advantage. Despite many claiming that narrative isn't his strong point, the veteran director successfully created a film with a deep, intricate storyline that charms the viewers in many ways. Watching the film is like walking down a recognizable street, but ending up in an entirely different realm where fear is embraced. This throws the viewer into a psychological loop that embodies madness. Number 5, A Bay of Blood, 1971. The old, wheelchair-bound Countess Federica is murdered by her husband Filippo, but even he gets slain by someone else, who then drags Filippo's body to the bay. Real estate agent Frank Ventura and his wife had been plotting the Countess's murder with Filippo, but were unaware of the man's death. Four teens break into the house to steal, but even they get brutally murdered. This was just the beginning of what would become a string of murders in the Bay Area and the Grand Mansion. Adding to the murders is an elaborate conspiracy with various stakeholders, all of whom wish to inherit the Bay Area mansion. Although not his best, A Bay of Blood is probably Barva's most influential film, and it shaped and paved the way for the slasher films that gained popularity in the 80s. Film franchises like Scream, I Know What You Did Last Summer, and Friday the 13th, take heavy inspirations from Barva's 1971 film. For instance, tropes like young teens in love being stalked by a ruthless killer amidst a beautiful wooded landscape became a trend in future Hollywood films. Naturally, this smoking gun behind the slasher film Bullets makes for any movie buffs watchlist. Number 6, Baron Blood, 1972. Peter Kleist arrives in Austria from America for a vacation and to explore his family history. He learns that his great-grandfather, Baron Otto von Kleist was a sadistic killer who murdered over a hundred villagers and came to be known as Baron Blood. The man was cursed by a witch named Elizabeth, who had cursed Baron Blood with a spell that would resurrect him from the dead so that she could take revenge and torture him eternally. Peter visits the castle along with Eva, his uncle's former student. 
The two of them read the cursed incantations and resurrect barren blood. The undead monstrosity soon begins his carnage and paints the castle red. Peter, Eva, and Carl will have to find out a way to destroy the evil. So you've come to talk to me about the Baron. During the production, the film faced several issues, especially because the Bank of America cancelled the funding, owing to the Nixon shock. However, Mario Barva managed to make a potentially eerie and spooky movie through his imagination and expertise as a horror film director. Yet, the fact remains that Baron Blood was a missed opportunity. Having said that, Baron Blood and all the movies that have been featured in this list will make any horror lover's time worthwhile. Let us know what you think about this list. Stay safe and have a good one.